Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know in order to display text or numbers on an LED matrix using an ESP32 microcontroller. If you've seen my video using a seven segment display with an ESP32 microcontroller, you might think it's going to be quite simple to set up an LED matrix as well. However, as I look through many of the libraries that are commonly available for Arduino and the ones that are used for Nanos or Unos or different microcontrollers with the Arduino branding, it's a different library setup than what's required for the ESP32. I'm not entirely sure why the requirements are different. I think it has something to do with the analog to digital converters, but whatever the situation, not all the libraries that are designed for Arduino work well with the ESP32. In this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of libraries that I found, one that works great for scrolling text or marquee, and the other that works great for static text that you'd be displaying that doesn't have any animation, but that could update with a timer or status, something like that. So without further ado, let's jump into everything you need to know. Take a look at the pinout from randomnerdtutorials.com and you can see here with the ESP32 microcontroller that those light green boxes that say VSPI, those are the terminals that we need to use SPI, which is the protocol that's used for these LED matrices. Previously we used the I squared C bus, but in this case we're using SPI. You'll need to connect terminals for MOSI or data, clock, and CS, as well as the voltage in and ground. You can see here the pinout combination on the ESP32, the LED matrix, and then also sometimes what the Arduino code calls these terminals. Sometimes they're called MOSI or MOSI instead of data in or data. The first library I'm going to show you is one that lets you do just a scrolling marquee text and to find that we're going to search for LED matrix driver. As you enter it in and search you have to scroll all the way down because it's actually all one word but you can see here LED matrix driver uh, by the author there and I've installed it already but if you install it then the example sketches become available. As we take a look here, scroll all the way down and they have a lot of libraries installed, but it is the LED matrix driver and I'm gonna choose the marquee text so that you can see that there. Of course, it includes the correct library and then you need to set the CS pin to the correct pin number. All we need to do is set this to pin five and then we can upload the sketch and test it out. By default, it also uses four LED segments, which is what we have in our eight by eight and four panels. You can see here the output display, it basically shows off all the available characters and just scrolls through one at a time at a set rate. This would be perfect if you needed to have some text that was scrolling as part of a project that you use. You can see here as we look at the text, it's very easy to change it to something else. Just by changing this variable that's listed here, you just put in whatever you want. In this case, let's try bald guy DIY is awesome with a couple of exclamation points and see what happens when we upload that sketch. As you can see, it switches and it's just that simple to create a scrolling marquee without any other code than that. I love the simplicity of it. Now if you want to change the animation speed or make the scroll faster or slower, you can change that animation delay. And if you wanted to edit some of those characters, you could do that. Although that's not necessary in order to get a good looking marquee scroll. The other library I want to show you you have to search for, it's the Max72XX panel library and it's one that you need to download from a GitHub. I will put a link in the description as well, but you can find it just by googling Max72XX panel. You can see here you're going to download the libraries and the examples and you can do that just by hitting this download code button and choose download zip. There's a really neat feature in Arduino if you haven't done this before where you can simply include a library instead of going to manage libraries you go to sketch include library and choose add a zip library and then just point it at the zip file that you downloaded. If you scroll down now, you'll see this new Arduino Max 72XX panel master, and there are the example sketches. I'm gonna show you the Madfly sketch. That's one of the examples here. It's very, very simple, but also pretty neat. 
So there's three libraries that always get included. The SPI library, which is a standard Arduino library, the Adafruit GFX library, which is needed, and then the Mac 72XX panel library. We need to change that CS pin to pin five according to our SPI pinout. And then you need to put in how many horizontal and vertical displays, although we already have the default of four. Now you can scroll through and see everything that they have here. But the one thing that we do need to change is just the rotation of these individual segments. And the reason I showed you that other library before, because it didn't need this kind of tweaking, but by default on this library, you do need to change the rotation of the panels depending on the type of LED matrix you have. On mine, all of the panels were skewed, turned 90 degrees, so it created a really weird effect as you went. But you change those all once you set the rotation of those and then upload your sketch. You see this neat little random fly buzzing around between your different panel segments. Let me break down the code a little bit for you with a timer that I created. Again, I'm gonna include those three libraries and set the CS pin to pin five, set my displays four horizontal, one vertical, and include the panel matrix declaration. I declared some variables here for minutes and seconds, and then we need strings because we are going to draw characters and we need string variables in order to accomplish that. So I created a string for minute, one for second, one for the colon in between, and one for a zero. If we, are, if we have no minutes or seconds. There's a weight, a reset, a spacer, and a width for the character. Now in the setup loop, you need to set the intensity, which is how bright it's going to be, with 15 being the brightest. And then we need to set those rotations, as I mentioned before. On my panel, all of the individual panels had to be set to one in order to have the correct orientation. Next, there's some logic here, and you can see it looks a little confusing. It's basically just setting up if it's within 60 seconds, it's gonna count down. If it reaches zero, it's gonna reset at 59 for the next minute, and then it's going to go through. If the minutes are less than 10, it's going to do something different, etc. To draw characters on the screen, you really just need these three variables. You need the fill screen low, which is going to set all the pixels off and reset your display for the next draw. And then you need the draw char or draw character, which is going to draw a character that you specify wherever you put it. Lastly, you're gonna to need to declare the X position, the Y position, uh, the string that you want to do. If you've declared a variable above as a string, you can just put the variable name here and usually the reference for which character of the string you'd like to print and then do a high and low and a one for the orientation. You can create as many of these as you want as long as you have room for them on your display. Finally, you need the matrix write function and that will put all of those items that you've declared onto your display. You're gonna continue that through in your loop over and over again in order to keep that display updating and putting in the things that you want. In my case, it's going to redraw for every 1000 milliseconds, which is gonna take slightly longer than one second just because of the time it takes for the microcontroller to execute one loop. So it will be one second and a few microseconds. As you can see here, each character is going to refer to a position in the string. Because I'm only using strings that have two digits, I only need to refer to the first one, which is zero, and the second one, which is one. But if you were going to have longer strings, then you would need to, of course, declare each one. The logic here is not super important that you understand it all. If you want a timer like this and you'd like the code that I created, simply send me an email and I'd be happy to share it with you. If we take a look at what my code looks like when we upload it, you can see here that it creates a timer which counts down from the starting position, which I set at this case to 45 minutes, and it counts all the way down to zero, just like I wanted. And at this, what looks like a difficult and daunting process is actually pretty easy. So those are the libraries you need in order to get started. Of course, it's gonna depend a lot on what your project is and what you're trying to accomplish but you can use these libraries separately or combine them together to get the effects that you're looking for. I've got a really exciting project that I just finished using one of these LED matrixes, and I can't wait to show you in a future reveal down the road. Until then, I hope this inspires your creativity for all sorts of different things that you could use, whether that's for text, characters, a clock, timer, or anything else. If you like this kind of content and you find it helpful, give the video a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel as it lets me know who's engaged and what kind of content they'd like to see down the road. If you'd like to leave a comment, that'd be great. Or if you wanna send me an email, my information's in the description below. If you know others that might be interested in this kind of content, please let them know. And keep coming back every week as I post a new video every Saturday morning.
I'm so appreciative of all the subscribers that have joined lately. As they close in on a thousand subscribers, it's really exciting to see that rapidly approaching and I can't wait to cross that threshold. Until next time, whether you use this project tutorial to enter the matrix or do something else, don't be afraid to be balder.